This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Great to get trainer Manny Robles on. Uh, we're here in New York. Obviously, I remember speaking to you in New York a couple of years ago, it was, in 2019, a famous night here at the Garden. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, the last time I was here was precisely for that fight. So I'm back, and it's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, you know, we have a great card tomorrow night. I got one of my boys, Anthony Herrera, making his professional debut on such a great card at, at the Madison Square Garden and none other than Lopez Cambosos. Tell me about Anthony. He's a good kid, he's a good amateur standout, he's number one in the nation, uh, uh, national champion, uh, uh, you know, represented uh, uh, the United States in several international uh, competitions. And so now it's time to go pro and, you know, making his professional debut at none other than the Madison Square Garden. I look forward to it tomorrow night. Who have you got in your stable currently, Manny? Who are you working with? Well, uh, next up, other than Anthony, we have uh, Curatilo, number one contender at 147 pounds. Uh, he'll be fighting the uh, title eliminator on uh, December 11th, uh, IBF title eliminator that is, so uh, you know we're looking forward to that. Uh, Maidana, Fabian Maidana fighting December 17th, uh, 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 Maidana's, uh, Chino Maidana's brother and uh, got a couple of other kids, uh, Saul Sanchez, uh, up and coming prospect. Uh, uh, number, you know, uh, multiple champion in in, uh, in his respective weight, and uh, we're looking for a shot at the world title, possibly uh, sometime next year. And Ahmed Medina, another kid I got fighting in December, four and zero, three knockouts, promising, you know, prospect, looking good, doing well. So you know, we're just we're busy and happy to be here. Yeah, I was just gonna say, sounds like a very busy time. Yes, for you. it always is. <laughs> You know, we're, uh, December will be a bu busy month, and we're looking at January being a busy month. Uh, I have uh, uh, Charles Martin fighting King Kong Ortiz on, the, on January the 1st, so that's going to be a great, a good fight for the public to, to see, and uh, we're looking forward to that as well. And let me ask you about that. A little bit of backlash that that's gone on pay-per-view. Obviously, that's not your department. You're just a trainer. But why do you think that should be a pay-per-view fight? I don't know. Look, I don't, I, don't, I don't make the rules. They called me about the fight, and my job is to get the fighter ready. Promoters do. I got to stay in my name. Promoters do what they do, and I coach. So, you know, we're going against King Kong Ortiz. It's going to be a tough task. Ask me about that. We're going to have our hands full, but I believe that uh, Charles will come in in, in, in in great shape and, you know, Looking to upset uh, King Kong Ortiz in his backyard. Should he do that? Where does Charles Martin go from there? Oh, I mean, look, he's been the mandatory. He fought a title eliminator last year, uh, and we're still waiting for a shot at the title. So now here we go again versus King Kong Ortiz, and I believe it'll definitely put him in the, into title contingency, contingency and possibly get a, a shot at the title next year, early, uh, mid-year or in the fall. Just uh, sticking with the heavyweight theme, referring back to that fight a couple of years ago. Since then, Joshua's had an up and down career. Obviously, he got the revenge in Saudi Arabia when we were there uh, for the rematch. And then, obviously, he's lost his titles to Alexander Rusik. In between, had a couple of fights as well. Um, but it seems like overall he's changed his style. He's not sure whether he wants to stay with Ron McCracken. He's been out in America speaking to other trainers. What have you made of that situation, Joshua? And what would your advice be to him? Well, well honestly, I, I believe that he should, he should stick with his coach, McCracken. If anything, they should add to it and then maybe bring in an, a, a second coach to, to kind of like uh, come in for advice, an experienced coach that has been there before that can bring something to the table. But I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend for him to change coaches because he's been with his coach for too long. And uh, his coach, nobody knows Joshua the way McCracken does. So uh, if, if anything, add, add to the team, but don't take away from the, from the team. That would be my advice. And I have to, and, and you know, lastly, versus uh, his fight versus uh, uh, Usyk, I have to commend Joshua for taking that fight. He fought the man no one else wanted to fight. You know, and, and I, I respect Joshua because he never backs down from a good fight. And uh, that's what you have to respect him for, you know what I mean? Despite the, 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 the result, obviously I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Joshua fan and I would have loved for him to see him win. But unfortunately that wasn't the case, but he fought a good fight. And the second time around, just like, just like he did with Andrew Reese, I'm sure he's going to find the, uh, uh, um, a way to come back and, and, and win and, and, and look better. And that's the reason why he's looking for... Maybe in another coach, like I said, bring in another coach, another set, extra set of eyes to, 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 to advise, to help, and to possibly come in with a better game plan than they, than they, than they did the first time around.
Well, listen, Manny, great to get you on the channel. Best of luck with Anthony Herrera at the Garden tomorrow night. Just a final question from me. We've seen Canelo possibly go up to cruiserweight mm. to face Alunga Makabu. What do you make of that, Manny? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Look, I, uh, um, Canelo, I respect Canelo. Canelo's an incredible fighter. I mean, what he's done, clean, uh, wiped out the division uh, at the super middleweight. And I, I, I would like to see him against Benavides. That would be a great fight. Uh, uh, Dimitri Vivol, perhaps at 175. There's some. There's a lot of fighters out there that 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 can definitely give Canelo a good fight. But he's just gotta, you know, he's gotta be willing to take those fights. But um, Canelo's at uh, and and you know, just like Mayweather was at one point, and he, he's he can pick and choose whoever he wants to fight because he's the star of boxing today. So, you know, people will watch this. It doesn't matter who he fights. People will be there to watch him fight. So. I, on the, on the other hand, uh, you know, what we saw a couple of weeks ago, Terrence Crawford and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, help me, yes, that was a great fight, man, that was a great fight, and to me, Crawf uh, Crawford is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Manny, thank you for your time and good luck tomorrow at the Garden, all right? I appreciate it, thank you very much.